yes what goes in the making of a scientist so somebody was telling me ma'am experience experience of what experience of science makes you become a scientist some people you know have been in science for the last 20 years 25 years but they just teach you what has already been there they just read what is already there in the books that is not being a scientist scientist means something who who has the mind to do something new who has to study something to find out something new the one who comes up with something new is a scientist actually okay studying whatever is already established that's okay for knowledge sake it's okay and that is must what is already written is 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 you know enhancing your knowledge but going in for research means that you want to go into the you are going to investigate into the details and finally you might come up with something new than what is already existing that's why science the world is always improving day by day if about 20 years ago we had one landline then we started getting one mobile phone then we started getting the touch screen phones then now there is no end to technology and even then there is no end each with each new day something new is coming up and that is because of the scientists and scientist doesn't mean the ones who are only doing the things with chemicals and all okay even in it sector the research is still going on okay what goes my question was like what goes in the making of a scientist what makes one become a scientist or a researcher yes so for this yeah the very first thing is curiosity okay the very first thing you need to be a scientist is that you should be curious to know why and how how did it happen why did it happen now how can it be done like this so when you are curious to do something else when you want to know, know something into the details second thing curiosity many people have but when they actually have to delve into the details then they give up yeah patience is required then okay curiosity patience side by side and all but all the more you people need to have a bright mind bright mind means one should be really a bit intelligent okay but uh, you never know but there is no yardstick to measure the brightness of your mind no one can say that today if some child is not doing very well in something that you can't say like the child is not bright there is no yardstick to measure your brightness you cannot determine like whether somebody is bright or not okay the brightness of your mind can be measured by your capacity to be patient by your capacity to do go into the details and uh, the kind of hard work you are ready to put in that means that you are bright if you are patient if you are hard working if you can uh, spend hours to one concept i am saying hours rather days years to one concept you are bright minded okay the biggest quality of a bright minded or an intelligent person is that that person has a lot of patience to do the things in details for that one thing one might spend hours nights or years even okay the scientists are able to come up to one concept after 20 years of struggle so they were intelligent they had patience they were hard working they never ever got fed up with their work so along with curiosity bright mindedness there is one thing more which we require to become a scientist that you'll have to find out from the text so one thing i'm leaving so the it's a theme of the chapter what goes in the making of a scientist so one point i'm leaving for you people to find out so here is a story of richard h a bright so here is this scientist who is being talked about so you might say it's a biography written by this man so in this chapter we come to know about how richard h a bright became a scientist eventually the boy who was born in a small town of pennsylvania from that place where he had nothing else to do he had nobody to play with he didn't have many boys to play with him he didn't have you can say his nobody was there in his neighborhood so he had no other company and he started playing with butterflies start he started getting the collection of about he had the collection of about 25 species of butterflies with him by the by the time he went to the kindergarten by the time he was in second grade he got a 
collection of about 25 species of butterflies and that at that time he realized that uh, now these species of butterflies have finished but by that time his mother brought him a book uh, the travels of monarch x so that book actually here monarch is uh, a kind of a species of butterfly so his mother brought him that book the travels of monarch x and from that book he never looked back because in that book he got to know the other various uh, you know species of the fish sorry butterflies and all and from that onwards and that book in the end uh, the writer you know that was of course a scientist that scientist had asked uh, the recipient of the book to send you know uh, some suggestions or some ideas so he would send the projects or the uh, whatever you can say projects to that very scientist whose book it, it was and eventually he got on to the track of doing experiments the boy who started uh, doing research or collection of butterflies eventually he started working upon dna okay now you people when you talk about like dna and uh, the tissues and all that is all the contribution of this very scientist so the one who started doing from collection of the butterflies from the neighborhood because he had no one else to play with so then he started becoming very curious very keen to collect the butterflies first then when he would be collecting the butterflies he got to observe so many things uh, yeah then he had to appear for some competitions at uh, some county uh, science fair and when he appeared for the county science fair for the first time the kind of project he submitted there he did not get any prize he was quite disheartened like how could he not get any prize whereas his other you know friends they were getting prizes but it instead of becoming disheartened instead of becoming disappointed he he realized that what might be the reason of his you know failure and he was able to make out like in order to win a prize in the science fairs you need not submit the ex projects which were very neat and clean or uh, the ones which are copied and pasted in order to win a prize he need to present a uh, original he he need to present an original exp, you know project and in order to give some original experiment or project you need to have good ideas then he started asking the same writer the one whose book his mother had gave him when he was in second standard he started asking that very scientist to give him ideas so he got many ideas to work upon and the moment he started getting ideas to work upon he started working on their experiments and then he started getting prizes after prizes in each science fair because he got to know like what is required to win a prize so what is required originality is required innovation is required you need to work upon the upon some idea to bring something new so ideas matter doesn't matter like how neat and clean your project is or your uh, model is but the matter is like what idea that is and how far is that idea applicable in the reality that is what actually the scientists go in for so he started winning prizes and and afterwards he never looked back so later on uh, this very person you know he did his uh, uh, post graduation and graduation from the harvard university and all so what he did that is really an exemplary thing in the history so whatever his biography is whatever he did of course we'll be reading that but right while reading this our focus should be upon like what makes what can how can we the ordinary people become great anyone can be okay the extra the people those who do extraordinary things they are not extraordinary they only do the things in an extraordinary manner they do simple things in different manner okay so hard work and all they have to, those are the intrinsic part of one's personality and along with this you need to be you need to have the ideas to work upon and yes parenting also matters and parenting with the kind of obedience on the part of child also matters if the mother brought a book how did the child read it that matters the parents might have kept a library of books for the children but how far are the children able to give their mind and soul to that book so one book changed the course of his life okay and there might be hundreds of books with some children 
they might not do anything with that okay you people have got the whole library of the world with you within your phone is that it how much we are able to get so the point is like how much we we get out of what we have it's also there right so let's start the chapter very beautiful story it is very inspirational very beautiful let's see this the making of a scientist a biography written by peterson about richard ebright so the making of scientists so he has received the sir scholar award and the stirring flow award for biochemistry in molecular bio biology so the kinds of awards he has got it's written over there it was his fascination for butterflies that opened the world of science to him so the world of butterflies that opened the world of science to him so what you do as uh, what is a game for a child might turn out to be his yes obsession so this obsession is uh, very good okay when uh, when you when you are after that uh, you know research it's your obsession so how did a book become a turning point in his life let's see this and which book is this hmm yeah so we are to see like how did that book become a turning point in his life and second thing is how did his mother help him what was the role played by his mother in making a making an ordinary boy become a scientist we'll be doing these two questions and you'll be writing these two answers in your notebooks today at the age of 22 a former scout of the year excited the scientific world with a new theory on how cells work so at the age of 22 ebright was able to discover the theory on he was able to give the world a new theory on how cells work at what age at the age of 22 so richard h ebright and his college roommate explained the theory in an article in the proceedings of the national academy of science so that theory they gave in the article which article it was in the proceedings of the national academy of science so proceedings is a kind of report so in that report of national academy of science two boys one was a bright and one other one was his roommate it was the first time that this uh, it was the first time that this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students in sports that would be like making the big leagues at the age of 15 and hitting a home run your first time at bat so in sports that would be like making the big leagues at the age of 15 so to make big leagues means like uh, to go in for a tough competition and all by the age of 22 when somebody is at the age of 22 this is the age when one can do uh, good in tough or in uh, competitive sports but doing a wonderful job in the field of science was something extraordinary okay so the line is in sports that would be like making the big leagues at the age of 15 and hitting a home run your first time at bat for richard ebright it was the first in a long string of achievements in science and other fields so, uh, as far as sports is concerned one could do well in cricket at the age of 15 but what he had done that was just one achievement in the strings of achievements which he was to get later on yet so point is like ebright got so many achievements that this achievement that his uh, theory on cells was published in the in that magazine you know in that article that was one achievement if your essay gets published in one big magazine you know that is an achievement so what happened that was his one out of many achievements got it from where do i get the expression like one out of many achievements which phrase justify my this sentence or phrase one out of many achievements yeah ashin you are speaking right now the answer yeah springs of achievement so it was just one out of the spring of achievements so what what achievement are we talking about here arpit wrong answer we are reading hardly we have done two paragraphs what achievement has he are we talking about here that this is one of the springs of achievements he got what one achievement 
Yes, Diksha. Speak up. Come on. Okay, next girl. Devita. Yes, that's the correct answer. That is the article on how cells work was published in the proceedings of National Science Academy. That is article was published in that big article, big journal. That was his achievement. If I ask you to write one article on some topic and that article gets published in the Tribune, that will be your achievement. And his article on how cells work that was published in the science journal. So that was his big achievement. And the bigger achievement was because never ever the, uh, the students' uh, articles have ever been published in that journal. It was for the first time that the students' articles were published there. So these two boys were students yet. Okay, sit down, Arpit, be careful. An only child. An only child, a bright, grew up north of reading. There wasn't much I could do there, he said. I certainly couldn't play football or baseball with a team of one. But there was one thing I could do, collect things. So the place, the place reading where he was born, he didn't have much to do. Neither could he play baseball, nor could he play football with just one person. What one? He alone, he was alone. He did not have any playmates over there. He did not have any friends in the neighborhood. So how could he play football or baseball or any other game? So he had no option. So he started collecting things. So what will he collect first? Let's see. So he did. And, and did he ever? Beginning in kindergarten, a bright collected butterflies with the same determination that has marked all his activities. He also collected rocks, fossils, and coins. He became an eager astronomer to sometimes stargazing all night. So he started collecting things. What kind of things he started collecting? Coins and butterflies. And he started collecting the butterflies with the same enthusiasm with which he collected other items. And at the top of all these things, he was very fond. He was very fond of gazing at stars. Also, he was fond of. He was a good astronomer. Also, he would gaze at stars at night for the whole of the day. Why so? Because his mother was was a very good parent. She had brought him cameras, uh, micro telescopes, and all. Okay, instead of bringing her, him you know, those stupid things. His mother brought him the, the things which would make him a scientist. Because you have to put these answers, these points in like what goes in the making of a scientist. What's the role of his mother? His mother had been very judicious in bringing to him or giving him what he might require. Okay. So her gifts were very sensible. So from the first, he had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind. So he, from the very beginning, he was curious as well as intelligent. So we have written these two points. So from the very beginning, he was curious. He was keen to know more and more and more. Then he was intelligent also. He also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning. So at the top of everything, Besides being curious and uh, intelligent, he had a great mother. The one who encouraged his interest in learning. She took him on trips, brought him telescopes, microscopes, cameras, mounting materials, and other equipment, and helped him in many other ways. So whatever the things he might need as a scientist, he was given all those things in, in his early childhood. I was his only companion until he started school. His mother said, so because it's a biography, so that person Peterson might have even interviewed mother also. How are the biographies written? Do you know? If you want to write somebody's biography, number one, you'll have to interact. You'll have to ask direct questions from that person. And you can ask 
the uh, questions from the people who are related to that person okay only one only that person's direct you know answers will not accomplish your biography so even mother is also telling the biographer that i was his only companion until he started school his mother said after that i would bring home friends for him but at night we just did things together so richie was my whole life after his father died when richie was in third grade so the mother gave all quality time to her son she even brought friends for him because he told us in the beginning that there were no friends for him in the neighborhood and mother even tried to compensate for that also it's not that mother told him like beta you don't need friends leave it she even brought friends for him you can see like how great parent she was otherwise parents what do they say they show their helplessness we can't help it ab nahi hai koi to kya kare kahan se laye but she would manage friends for him okay so but at night we did just so yes the evenings late evenings mother would spend with her son because uh, uh, that uh, boy's father died when he was in third grade so then mother would give all her time to her son she and her son look at the text please she and her son spent almost every evening at the dining room table so in the evenings they would be at the dining room table if he didn't have things to do i found work for him not physical work but learning things his mother said he liked it he wanted to learn so the boy was also very fond of learning so the mother would accomplish mother would try to fill that need for him whatever he had for learning so what she would do when he would have nothing to do the she would not let her child say that i'm getting bored before he would be get bored with something she would have some other things so that the child would be occupied it was it would not be the uh, physical things like play with ball play with this so she would be giving him certain activities which would fill his mind she and her son spent almost every evening at the dining room table so this we have done and learn he did so he did he learned also he earned top grades in school on every day on every day things he was just like every other kid his mother said so he was a top scorer in the school also and moreover uh, on every day things he was just like every other kid like otherwise he was a normal kid it's not that he would always be uh, spending time in reading only or doing with butterflies only he was not uh, some uh, alienated kind of child he was like other normal children like he would do sometimes mischiefs also that is being normal he would behave like normal children also it's not that he was always like an einstein in the beginning got it so it's not that the bright children intelligent children don't do silly things okay they behave normally also so the the way you people normally behave you know okay so uh, by the time he was in second grade a bright had collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown so here is a list so by the time he was in second standard what he did uh, he had collected 25 species of butterflies so their names are written here species and subspecies of butterflies collected in six weeks in breeding that place so within six weeks he was able to collect all these species you read them when you are free at home don't tell me ki ma'am you are never free okay tomorrow i'll be asking you some names okay read that so uh, uh, nice names they are purplish copper you know silvery blue good ones so that probably would have been the look at the text please that probably would have been the end of my butterfly collection he said so when he had collected about 25 species he thought like maybe all the butterfly have butterflies have finished but then my mother got me a children's book called the travels of monarch x that book which told how monarch butterflies migrate to central america opened the world of science to the eager young collector so that book in which he got to know like about how the monarch butterflies how they migrate to central america that book opened vistas of endless learning for him 
so by the time he was able to collect 25 species of butterflies he was thinking like now all butterflies might have finished but when he started reading the book he realized that there is no end to these uh, the species of the butterflies so from here he got to know like how the butterfly which one monarch how it travels or migrates to central america from there he his you know learning increased let's see at the end of the book readers were invited to help study butterfly so at the end of the book the readers were invited to help study butterfly uh, to study butterfly migrations they were asked to tag butterflies for research by dr frederick i'm reading this again there will be a question now i'll read this whole paragraph then there will be a question be careful now at the end of the book the readers were invited to help study butterfly migrations they were asked to tag butterflies for research by dr frederick urahart of the university of toronto canada a bright's mother wrote to dr urahart and soon a bright was attaching light adhesive tags to the wings of monarchs anyone who found a tagged butterfly was asked to send the tag to dr urahart i'm giving you one 10 seconds you read read the paragraph and i'll ask you a question then the question is what was the post reading activity what was the post reading activity yes ready now what was the post reading activity okay nana give the answer okay yes that is correct answer though a little confusing so the readers were asked to send the butterfly to tag a butterfly on whom they would want they would like to be on whom they would like the things to be researched so suppose you are a reader if you find a butterfly around your habitat you can number one catch it then you can tag it on its wings and that you can send to the to this person for research got it so the mother what she did she wrote to that uh, ura heart she sent him a, a letter and eventually he was invited to send the tagged butterfly for research so was it an easy task not that difficult also but let's see what his experience would be tomorrow okay Thank you.